is good. Right. And so that goes back to something I, I, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts is that, so you eat your free food, probably one of the most helpful things in terms of like food insecurity. It's a big mm -hmm. issue, like most campuses here, it's a big issue. Obviously you see how, because how many people follow it. But if I had the intention, okay, I'm gonna help food insecurity, which I'm very honest, that was not my intention of, of creating this. Mm -hmm. I just kind of stumble upon it. But um, like I see many people trying to fix food insecurity and they would have never arrived at something like this, which turns out to be more helpful than the other things. I'm saying one is better than the other, just it depends yeah, on what yeah, people yeah. use more. Uh, which is, which so is explain like, to me what you mean by food insecurity, because I, I, I can imagine that meaning several different things. So the definition, the definition I'm going to use is basically people who are hungry, mm -hmm. who either cannot, don't have the time or cannot afford to eat. Okay. And therefore they're all okay. hungry. Okay. That's the definition. Okay. Uh, so the definition of, of uh, so like that's, that's that and then people being hungry, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't my intention though. My intention was yeah. not yeah. to fix food insecurity. Uh, how I created it, if, if I was taking this differential equations class, mm -hmm. I was bored and it was before the finals. It was like a day like today, last semester. And I was just uh, underwhelmed, was bored. So I, yeah. I got this idea, I went home, started coding at 9 p.m., was done by 4 a.m. Not a smart thing because I had a final the next day, mm -hmm. but whatever. But uh, anyway, so I did that, whatever. It's like, okay, it's a cool project. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it didn't, ended up becoming a pretty useful thing. So that goes back to the design philosophy that we were talking about is that, you know, like we should design things with respect of the users, mm -hmm. but I would have never arrived at that conclusion if I was thinking about what people wanted. Like you knew that people wanted food. Well, it's like one, it's like saying people wanted interaction. We all want interaction. It's like, uh, for instance, I was, I was uh, at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I talk to someone like, oh yeah, I've been trying to meet people and like, oh, thank you for saying hi. Like we yeah, all yeah. want to meet more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, there's always like this thing. Like we all, like we all know what we, what we want. Like you know, food, love, community. But uh, it's not like we don't like the. It's like a non-trivial path to. But actually... you, but you, you actually thought more about this than you think you did. I mean, if you look at the first version of Facebook, the first version of Facebook had people's pictures. Right. There was no like what we call today the feed used to be called a wall. They added that later when they're like people want interaction. You've had the benefit of looking at what people have wanted in other sites, and you use that to create what you did. Um, and so I think there is that element in there of borrowing from existing tools that, you know, showed you what people want. But food, I mean, is a basic need. Um, and you've probably seen lots of people like crowd around pizza or crowd around other free items. And I'm guessing that that helped guide you there. And, you know, if this were a project that I were building, you know, I would put out a formative version of it. And then I would probably keep tweaking it afterwards when I saw how people used it and see how I changed it. And sometimes you don't only just change. Oh, one other thing I think is super important is it's not just the tool that you build, but it's also how you advertise it and the workflow for the tool. Hmm. So, for example, like who is the person that's like putting out the posts? Um, how often do you do it? Um, you know, to which groups do you advertise it? Um, so maybe I could illustrate this better with an example. But um, like changing the dynamics of how you use a tool can be really fascinating, especially in, in like machine learning. So like, for example, um, this isn't social media. Forgive me if I use a medical example, but um, there are, you know, many researchers today working on tools where you can use machine learning to help you with decision making. Um, I don't want to say diagnosis per se, because like, but to help you make event, but to help you form a decision. And so let's say I use a tool right now um, and let me just use an example and I'm making this up around like mammography for breast cancer. And so I create this tool. I, you know, I see the patient, I get a scan. Um, the scan goes into some machine learning algorithm, but then I have a choice. I have a choice in that I show the decision of the algorithm to the, the doctor or the clinician at the same time as they're making their decision or I show it to them after they make their decision. So in one recent case, they found that when you show it to somebody as they make the decision, it influences them. Right. If you show it to them after they've already made their decision, they're hard fast and stick to their decision and they, they don't wanna change their mind. Mm -hmm. So if you think of the, the pipeline of when you introduce information to people, it's not just a technology, but it's also the decisions, the social decisions we make around how we choose to present that technology to folks um, that can be interesting. 
Um, so the, the idea of like, I remember when I was in graduate school, we had a free food camp. So we had a kitchen. It was, it was so widely used. Um, and there was like a camera. And whenever there was like food there, you know, you could see it. And right. then people built on top of that. And then somebody's like, well, they built like a, a you know, a diff. I mean, this was like in the like yeah. early nineties. Um, and so then whenever they noticed a difference in the, in yeah, the image, yeah. like, there'd be like this bell sounding and people would like run to that space. <laughs> so in terms of sociality, you know, some of the things that we do know uh, around spaces and sociality that we do know that food brings people together. Um, you know, one of the things like one of my favorite researchers, I don't know what to call him. Maybe he's an urbanologist. His name is William White. Um, he studied social spaces, physical social spaces and what made them popular. Mm-hmm. And he found that food made spaces popular, like having water made spaces popular, having what he called triangulation, which was like having like a magician, something that people could look at and talk to each other, even if they don't know each other, mm-hmm. because there was that magician there. And food is a triangulating factor as well. Um, he found trees. But the number one thing he found that helped people, you know, hang out in a space was having a place to sit. And not just any place to sit, like, cause there's lots of this, like, ar- concrete architectural benches. Right. They're great in photographs, but are really uncomfortable to sit on. But he found that, you know, a specific type of chair was good to sit on. Um, and so his work actually changed zoning laws across the country for how to make, like, good parks. Now, if you take that analogy and you want to translate it to social media, like, what is the equivalent of a chair in a virtual space? Like, what would, what would we need there? And so if you look at Facebook, um, you could argue that, you know, the Facebook feed is kind of like a piazza. It's kind of like a, a public forum. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that people looked at were the likes. Um, and so all of those other signals were what were, were like, like getting people there. So it was a place to see and be seen. Right. Um, and so some of these things work great uh, in a public space, though. Like if I were to go to the quad, I can mostly see who's watching me and who's not. Right. Like that metaphor breaks when you get into social media because you can have so many more people watching than you can see. So making sense of these um, sort of catalysts for interaction mm-hmm. can become a little bit harder.